Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Uh, I was just going over some of the word here, and uh, we finished up uh, up to about uh, chapter eight in Matthew, and uh, so at this point, though, I was just kind of going through. I can't I ran into Luke. I, I I know I've tried to explain to you before. Amen. About the rock, <laughs> and and many of you keep wanting to uh, confuse the rock with the cornerstone of the foundation. So, as I was reading through some of uh, the Lord's uh, words, His teachings, uh, here in Luke, oh, I guess it's six. 46. And uh, the title of this particular paragraph, not that it makes much difference because, like I've said before, there's a lot of things that man has added to this, but the writings, as far as I'm concerned, are legitimately recorded and written and copied uh, as to what our Lord said. Let me read this to you. Uh, this is uh, 646, uh, Luke 646. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply, laid the foundation on rock. When the flood arose and the river burst against that house, but could not shake it because it had been been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell and great was the ruin of that house. <sighs> I just thought it was interesting. He actually mentions, amen, Jesus, the foundation on rock. Now we know he's the cornerstone of the foundation, but here he is saying that that foundation is dug down and placed upon rock. And I've uh, <laughs> explain to you that uh, Peter is not the rock of which the church was built upon. God the Father is the rock. And that rock is the revealed word of the Father, which he was revealing a truth to Peter. And that's when the Lord said, Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And that's where the revealed word of God comes from. So, and I've mentioned to you before that uh, it, it comes to us through the types of natural Israel's journey. And that's how we come into it. So, I, uh, I'm going to be going back up to my sisters. I think I may have mentioned that last time. Didn't have a lot of uh, comments on the last few videos. Um, that's okay. Somebody's listening because I can see that uh, you know that it's been viewed. So that's all that matters. Um, like I said, I think we end stopped at chapter eight in Matthew. Um, yeah, yeah, because 28 on chapter, uh, or verse 7, or chapter 7, verse 28. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he had taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. So, in chapter 8, we go through the centurion. Uh, and here's the other thing I, I've mentioned to you before. 
<laughs> when when you see a multitude of people that have come out to listen to the Lord, actually they came out to see any miracles that he might perform. It was like entertainment for them. Uh, there were a few among them that were actually there to be taught by him. <clears throat> Now when, yeah, this is uh, 8.18. Now when Jesus saw a great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. Okay, wait a minute. Oh. Gave orders to go over to the other side. He scribed and approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, which is a pretty famous quote, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Now he's speaking about those who are spiritually dead. Amen, Jesus? And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? And then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him. I had just read that about the uh, disciples being uh, ministered to by the Lord and uh, what he had uh, mentioned uh, concerning the multitude that may have been a Luke I was reading it. But uh, I don't like, and I told you before, really uh, going over the milk too much. And I hadn't really read ahead very much. I just was sitting down reading it and ran across that one about the foundation being set on a rock. On the rock. And I felt like sharing it. Actually, I am a little concerned that uh, I haven't heard from a few people that normally do uh, make comments, but that's... Uh, you know, it's getting to be a real uh, struggle out here, I think, for some people. But uh, And it's about to get real dark. Uh, pretty much uh, pretty much that period of time of which uh, it's going to be a couple more years. But over the next couple of years, it's going to get real dark. That's why I've mentioned to many people before that I don't think that uh, Barack Obama has anything to do, prophetically speaking, with the uh, end time as far as the Antichrist or the false prophet or anything like that. He's only got another uh, year and a half, two years uh, max, for his uh, presidency to, to exist. Now, he may very well be... Uh, participate in any thing that goes on with Syria. I, I really kind of doubt that, though. I really don't see that. But this is the build-up, I do believe, of the small war that's getting ready to take place between Israel and whoever else over there. <sighs> that may come against her, but uh, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's the big one. It's the one that gets everybody's attention on Israel so that she's more or less forced into a peace settlement. And, uh, but then tribulation begins. So, I don't know, according to my clock, that, that would be a, still a few years down the road before uh, tribulation begins. But... Remember that flood that's coming against this house. <laughs> Amen, Jesus. So, I don't know. 
it be it, it may be very closely related amen and like I said before sometimes things have got to get real scary before people start to want to take shelter <laughs> amen so but that's that's where the sons and daughters come in amen Jesus and uh, trust me you'll be uh, you'll be hoping and praying that there are that the Father has sent them you'll be praying that this be true but until you get to that point you know I it was just uh, yeah sister Karen Sinina, Sina I don't know exactly how she pronounces that but she usually has these kind of long and detailed dreams I was just uh, watching one that uh, she had shared uh, uh, this month but I think it was from about three months ago I'm not real sure but uh, it was interesting because there's that ship amen out on the water yeah, as in the day of Noah I know and and, and most people want to look at that as the day of Noah and so, oh yeah well they're given in marriage and everything's no more folks I told you before that's the earth that's the covering over okay you got to dig down deep under that all right to get to the pearl of what's being said the truth of that relative relationship between Noah and the day of Noah it shall be as the day of Noah has to do with the ark the ship <laughs> amen Jesus of which we're being gathered into the barn the barn the ark the ship the covenant the anointed covering it's all the banquet hall they're all the same they're all a picture of coming in under the wings okay of the saviors that come down from Mount Zion. And Mount Zion is a spiritual mountain. It's the highest of all mountains. Amen, Jesus. And uh, that's where the sons and daughters uh, go up that mountain and they descend, ascend and descend, like Jacob's ladder. Amen. So, anyway, uh, I just wanted to share that little bit of tidbit. And uh, I do believe we're coming into a few days of darkness here, just like uh, Sister Barbara had mentioned on, uh, what is that, God's Healer 7. Uh, I keep a pretty close watch on what it, I think Dan's supposed to have some kind of a prophecy that he's supposed to be coming forth with. Amen, Jesus. Uh, yeah, i got to go up to my sisters here. Uh, Tuesday I'll be going up there and uh, probably stay up there for a month, at least a month. Need to help her out. They're in the process of moving. So that's about it. I uh, just wanted to touch base with everyone and, and uh, give thanks to the Father for the fellowship I have had for the period of time that I've had it with those whom I've had it with. And I've appreciated it very much. I will stay on this uh, YouTube, right, Lord willing, right on through the end. But, but like I mentioned before, depending on the work and will of the Father, you know. But the, I'm praying that there'll always be someone or an opportunity provided for me to to share what's going on here in Tucson, so that you guys can be kept aware. Uh that's about it. I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen? Amen.